let's look at torsion. Okay, so here we are interested in a shaft. Let's draw an axis. And then the shark is subject to a torque. And let's say that this is the Z axis. Now, if we uh, take a circle and then just blow this up, so we have a big circle there. This is just a blown up image of the blue. And if you look at uh, what happens to a point, let's call this point C on the on the shaft as a result of this torque T is that this point will move to another point C prime. Okay, that's basically because the torque induces a shear force and the shear force causes it the point C to basically turn. Now here we are obviously assuming that this part is fixed and that's why there is a transmission of torques the way it is and it's going to twist otherwise it clearly rotated and there would not be any uh, shear stress. So it needs to be fixed some point. Okay, now uh, if you look at if you now, uh, so since this, this part is fixed, it's not moving, what we can do is we can draw lines. So let's take one point here, any point, and then just draw a line and just draw another line from C prime. So this point clearly is fixed. It's not going to move because it's fixed to the uh, wall, right? And so the this point C and C prime is going to, show that, well, there's still be an arc, and that arc, let's say that the angle, the arc angle is gamma, gamma, which is this angle. And we also know that this is a circle, so let's draw the radius. Let's say that this radius is rho, and this point is O. And then this length of this cylinder is L. So this thing is going to be L. And let's say that one last thing is this angle here is theta. So this is the this is the angle at the center of the circle, while this angle gamma is that due to the twist over the length of the shaft. Now we can do some uh, geometry here. C, C prime is the arc length. I'm going to write it in two ways. One is uh, C, C prime is L times gamma. So arc length is basically the radius, which is L times gamma, right? We can also write the arc length as rho times theta. The same way, uh, two ways of writing the same thing. So now from this, late, uh, the latter expression, these two, we can write a solution for gamma. It's rho theta divided by L. Okay, now remember rho is some radius, but if the true radius is C, that is the point from O right the way to the circumference, then clearly this rho is proportional to theta, Sorry, gamma is proportional to theta. And so if you want the maximum gamma, then that will be C theta divided by L, where C is the circum the radius. Okay, and rho is radius of some section. So that's something we need to remember. Let's box it. Okay, so let's, uh, let me just give you definitions of these terms. Gamma is the shear strain. Theta is called the angle of twist. Rho and C are the 
radius. So with that, you can, this is a formula we've done earlier, that is if you want to find the shear stress, it's the bulk modulus G times gamma, or since we know a formula for gamma now, it's G rho theta divided by where I use the first expression. So this is uh, another formula which is useful. It helps you to compute the shear stress as a function of the radius, length and the angle of twist or if you have the shear strain you could use shear strain too you hear g is bulk modulus so constant for the material okay, you could also compute the maximum which i'll do the next page so you could also compute the maximum shear stress it's simply putting the maximum shear strain gamma, so gamma max. So you'll put essentially C for rho, and then you'll get a formula for the maximum shear stress. So let's write that down. So maximum shear stress tau max is simply G gamma max, but gamma max is the radius theta divided by L. So like before, for we've done this for uh, shear force V and bending moment sigma, we've computed how the stress would change as a function of distance. We can do the same thing for a circular shaft. So if there's a circular shaft like this with the center O and radius C, then from this formula or the earlier one, you can see it varies linearly with distance. So the shear stress would be zero at the center and increase to its maximum value on the outer edge. So here tau is zero, here tau is max, and the formula for maximum torque is given there. If this is some point where the shear stress is tau, then we can write tau well, we wrote tau equals g gamma equals g c the g rho theta divided by l. We wrote tau max as g gamma max g c theta divided by l. And so from this, we can actually uh, write down tau divided by tau max is gamma divided by gamma max, which is the same as rho divided by C. We should put it here. This is C. This, this part is rho. So we do see that the shear stress tau varies linearly with distance, okay? So this point is going to have the highest shear stress, not the point in the middle. Now, if instead of this, you had a hollow shaft, something like this, then the stress pattern would be Something like this. The max stress is on the outer side. The min stress is on the inner side. And then the ratio of tau min, tau max. Okay, so let's call CO and CI as the inner and outer radius, then we could have we would have CI divided by CO would be the how the, the shear stress varies. Okay, so note that the shear stress is not zero at the inner edge, it's going to be non-zero.
Okay, now it's off. Uh, now we've we've computed the shear stress, we've computed the shear strain in, in terms of angle of twist. But what we are really want to do is we want to somehow be able to relate the torque to the shear stress or angle of twist and so on, because what really causes this torsion to happen is the torque T. So I'm going to derive an expression for torque T as a function of uh, what we have so far. Okay, so let's derive that. So consider the, the cross section of the shaft, consider a small element of area dA. This is the torque. And then this area is, let's say, at a radius of rho. And because of this torque T, this area is subjected to a shear stress of tau, right? So that shear stress would be this way because of the torque, it's going to produce a counterclockwise um, sort of force. If you multiply this torque with dA to get the force, that's pretty much what we'll do. If you want to compute the torque dT due to the small element dA, it will be the shear force, which I've not shown here. I will shear times dA, that's the definition of, uh, sorry, that's not right. It's force times, it's moment, right? So torque is uh, F shear, which by the way is in the same direction. F shear times rho, just a definition of torque. But F shear is tau dA, that's the definition of shear force times rho, and so dt is this. So if you want the torque, it should be integral zero to t, integral from uh, over the area. So tau dA times rho. Yeah, so we need uh, to somehow sub in the value for tau, but we know what tau is. It's tau is tau divided by tau max is rho divided by c. So tau is rho divided by c times tau max. So we substitute two in one. We have t equals rho divided by c rho square tau max dA. Yeah, I'm going to pull out the constant terms. Tau max is constant. C is constant. So we're left with rho square dA. Yes, yeah, so this rho square dA is something which is a property of the geometry of the material. It's known as the polar moment of inertia, commonly abbreviated as J. This is also in the text in on uh, table A18. A8, I think. Uh, table A18, but I also gave you that table in a previous class. Okay, so let's write the formulas which we are interested in, which would be helpful for solving problem. It's tau max j 
divided by C or you could also write tau max as T C divided by J. This depends on what's asked, what's unknown. This is one formula. You reverse the from if you want to solve for tau max instead, that's the formula. Okay, so I'm going to give you a summary of all the formulas and stuff, uh, all these disparate things. You'll have everything in one place. Well, that's what we've derived so far. Okay, so let me give you a summary of all formulas and then we'll actually solve problems. So this is the summary. So we have all the formulas in one place. So what we have so far is and uh, gamma or shear strain is rho theta divided by L. From this, if you want the maximum strain, it's simply you replace rho with C. And so you have C theta divided by L. The shear strain, the, sorry, the shear stress is the, the torque rho divided by L, if you want the maximum, just go T C divided by, so this should be J, this is J. And then finally, if you want the angle of twist, it's T, you do T L divided by J times bulk modulus. So this is a, a summary of everything you need in order to solve problems.